In this video, I'm going to discuss projectile motion. Projectile motion was uh, first studied seriously by Galileo. Galileo divided this motion into two motions, horizontal and vertical motions. The page on, on the right shows his analysis of a projectile launched horizontally. Now let's divide a projectile like this into two components, a horizontal component and vertical component. Horizontal component is no, is the cosine component, v initial times cosine theta, and vertical component is uh, v initial times sine theta. Horizontal and uh, vertical motions are independent of each other, but they have a common uh, component which is time. So when we drop a ball or when we launch horizontally, these two balls hit the ground at the same time. The horizontal component of velocity is constant, that is acceleration is zero. Vertical component of uh, velocity is changing by time, so that is acceleration due to gravity and giving us uh, g 9.81 and the minus because it's pointing downward. The unit is meter per second square. Now let's look at the full motion. So we have uh, initial velocity, and the velocity uh, has two components decomposed into two components shown here. And the horizontal component should not change as uh, shown. The size we can understand this from the size of the vector is not changing because there is no acceleration along horizontal. Same size, same size, and same size. The only thing is changing is the vertical component so uh, first it is big and gets smaller and smaller and at the top there is no horizontal component and after that it flips now notice the same heights from the ground for vertical components are same in magnitude but flipped because direction is changing for this height we look at the same uh, magnitude of vertical components of velocity. When it hits the ground, it's going to hit with the same uh, magnitude of velocity. I recall the equation of motions. The first equation is for this displacement. So it requires initial velocity. So this is basically either x component or y component depending on uh, which direction of motion you are studying, so we are not specifying here. Initial velocity multiplied by time plus 1 over 2 a acceleration times t square. So that's for displacement. For velocity later time, it requires initial velocity and uh, acceleration and time. So the last uh, form is basically this. Uh, the time independent of the second equation. So notice we don't have time, but instead we have delta x. So a times delta x times 2 and summed with the square of initial velocity. So that this sum gives you the square of the final velocity. When we write this, these three equations for horizontal motion, because acceleration is zero, this term vanishes and the same this and same this. And so when we write the uh, remaining part, delta x equals v naught x times t. Now we are specifying here uh, v naught x because we are really writing it for horizontal motion. This is good. We are going to use this to solve problems. Second one is in information only. We already stated that, or third one. It says when we, when we were discussing the size of uh, horizontal component we said that it doesn't change so that means the horizontal component of the velocity at any time during the motion is the same so that's basically what is written here now we are going to write the same kinematic equations for vertical motions all we have to do is write the acceleration now this acceleration is going to be a specific acceleration that's why we are going to put a tail around it and make it g and also we need to implement a direction when we rewrite direction is downward so that's why minus and just the magnitude with no arrow on top of it so that's what it is written here in red instead of plus 1 over 2 a t square 
it is minus 1 over 2 g t square it's minus g t minus 2 g delta y because it is vertical motion it's always specified as delta y v y v y square now let's look at this problem an object is launched at a velocity of 20 meter per second in a direction making an angle of 25 upward with the horizontal so when we decompose this 20 meter per second upward a 25 degree angle 25 degree angle so when we decompose this into two components we get here v not x calculated here as 20 times cosine 25 18.1 and we got v not y as v not y as 20 times sine 25 8.4 Part A says what's the total flight time for this uh, motion delta y is the displacement, vertical displacement when object uh, leaves the ground, goes up and then when it comes to the same level, displacement is zero that's why we have zero here vertical component is calculated, 8.4 but we have to also write the direction because it's a vacuum quantity and because the direction is upward it is 8.4, positive 8.4 times t minus 1 over 2, 9.8 t square after the calculation time for the whole uh, for entire motion it's 1.7 seconds second part of the problem is what is the horizontal range of the object to solve this we are going to uh, use the horizontal motion form of uh, displacement equation in that case we, we had only one term remaining which is the velocity component 18.1 multiplied by the time 1.7 we just found in part A that gives us 31 meters third part says uh, what's the magnitude of the velocity of the object just before it hits the uh, ground now recall uh, the definitions that we, uh, we discussed earlier the horizontal component did not change so we already know that it's already calculated so we can write the value of this horizontal component in the problem and vertical component magnitude of the velocity component is also not changing when it hits the ground we are going to use uh, this property so when we decompose into two components so we found here as 18.1 meter per second the vertical component was 8.4 meter per second so that means the horizontal component should remain as it is even the direction so 18.1 meter per second the vertical component same in magnitude just the direction is different 8.4 meter per second we just have to use Pythagorean theorem to find the final velocity okay. so that is done over here a square of 8.4 and square of 18.1 and the square root of the sum gives you 20 meter per second this last part can also be found using energy conservation let's, let's draw the motion diagram okay we had uh, initial velocities 20 meter per second the final velocity is the question V final so mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final that because it's still a uh, conservation right to write mechanical energy uh, we write potential energy plus kinetic energy potential energy is mgh initial plus kinetic energy 1 over 2 m v initial square equals mgh final that's the potential energy 1 over 2 m v final square now notice that the heights are same therefore we can drop these these two terms we can also simplify 1 over 2 m 1 over 2 m terms so what is remaining is v initial square equals v final 
square. If we know the initial, which is 20 meter per second, that's going to be the V final. V final. We found 20 meter per second for the final velocity, and the answer agrees with our results using kinematic equation. Thank you for your attention.